All right, good evening. We're just going to get started here in just a moment. Let everyone adjust their audio settings. Um, all right, so good evening. My name is Samantha. I'm one of the recruitment advisors here at Pepperdine Grazio Business School. Today, we are going to be doing a program overview of the Master of Science in Global Business. Um, I have two exciting guests who will be joining us as we go over things. But first, I wanted to cover some housekeeping items. So go ahead and make sure that your mute button is on. I think we've been doing this Zoom thing long enough. We've all been there where somebody had like their dog barking in the background. And then, of course, the sc their screen lights up and everybody looks at your square and it's kind of awkward. So go ahead and mute if you have not already done so. Uh, if you have questions, please use the chat box. We will be doing a Q&A for everyone at the end. Uh, if you are feeling a little shy or you're not sure if you want everybody to see your question, you can always send me a private message. So look for Samantha and you can send me a private message and I won't read your name, but I will read your question. And then lastly, just be aware that we are recording this. So without further ado, let me introduce our two guests. So um, next slide, please. We have two very fun professors that are very involved in the MS and Global Business program who are gonna be going over at Overview. I have Dr. Kimber Matarazzo and Dr. Jim Salas. So thank you guys for taking time out of your, I know you've got a busy week coming up, Kimber, and you guys are in finals week. So I appreciate you joining us this evening, and I will let you take over and talk about your program. Okay, so it has been a busy week, but we're excited to talk about all things MSGB because it's one of our best, we, we call it the best program here at Pepperdine. Absolutely. <laughs> because and we're two marketers, by the way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So one of the things that um, we want to do is first introduce the MSGB committee. So the program committee works diligently to make sure we correct, have the right program, the right um, classes, the right curriculum, the right um, destinations, um, all for our students. So they really are support for the students. So you'll see that we have six faculty and three staff. So we work really closely to make sure we have the correct curriculum that will help our MSGB students be best for the world leaders, because we know that a lot of them are international students. The majority of our cohorts are international. We want them to come here and be in the United States and learn more about the United States and learn more about other countries. And to me, that's what's so unique about this program is to the diversity in the program itself. So you're going to, to attend courses with students from all different countries where you're going to learn about their cultures, you're going to learn more about them personally, and develop that international global experience. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the program. I'm going to turn it over to Jim, and he'll talk about how this program is aligned with our Pepperdine mission. Thanks so much, Kimber. So again, we're very excited to have you consider joining us here at our Master's in Global Business. And as you can see, our program is directly aligned with our vision and our values. Our founder, um, George Grazadillo, specifically for the business school, was really centered around how do we build the next generation of entrepreneurs that have a very strong global foundation. And this program is centered on fulfilling that vision. As you can see, we're focused on creating managers that can not just work at organizations, but have a positive influence in the communities in which they're working. So we're really centered around developing what we're calling value-centered leaders. And we want to introduce you to some advanced practice business um, uh, education. So you can go ahead and fulfill that vision by being entrepreneur in spirit, ethical and focus, and then global in orientation. And this ultimately rolls up to our university-wide vision, which is to leave, live a life of purpose, service, and leadership. And especially for this particular program, we're going to show you through travels around the world, through the curriculum, and through the relationships we're going to introduce you to, that in every facet of your lives, professional or personal, you're going to have an opportunity to serve those around you. Great. Okay, so we'll tell you a little bit about the key events that we have, and this slide covers a lot of them. Um, so the first thing is we have a lot of experiential events because it's so important for us to give that global experience in the program. 
Some of them we do here in the U.S., some we do outside, which we'll talk about. The first one is our GMI workshop. So we that's our global mindset initiative. And we usually start the program off with this type of a um, assessment. And the assessment is really what is your global mindset? Where are you at? And throughout the program, we thread this global mindset in through all of your courses. And at the very end, in our SEER workshop, you'll see that on there, at the very end, we then assess, assess you again, and you see the progress of how much you learned about being a global international business person. And it really is unique to Pepperdine. There are is some other universities that use it, but we really you know, have this third-party assessment that works really great. So we have a lot of workshops and a lot of things along the way. Um, we also have something called POLA. That's the Port of LA. And what we try to do is really give our students experiences outside of the classroom where they have the opportunity to see, you know, the Port of LA is, you know, one of the largest um, ports in the world that imports and exports products in and out for the United, for the entire United States and the entire world. And we have a little field trip that we take all of our students there. And I shouldn't say little, about 150 students go. We take a lot of the other programs with us. Um, we've done other things like visit LAX. We had a behind the scenes tour of LAX, which was unbelievable. So these kinds of experiences, really understanding that global trade, that global importing export, um, just really understanding more of that in real world. We also do some that's not listed on here is some things that we have more practical learning. So a lot of our professors um, are practitioners, like I'm a practitioner faculty. And um, instead of like Jim, who's doing a lot of research, in his area of discipline, I do a lot of practical. I use a lot of my past experiences in business and really help the students to learn that way. And then Jim works a lot with teaching and he'll tell you more about that, students in theory. So you're learning both sides of, of making you that global executive and that global business person when you leave Pepperdine. So the- yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, that's 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 what I think is, is unique about this. You're getting that experience with different, um, different types of um, professors. And our classes are very small. So you're getting that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your professors. So throughout the time that you're here at Pepperdine, you'll have many different professors. They'll know your name, they'll work with you. Um, if there's a specific di discipline that you're interested in, um, you know, we have three concentrations, which is marketing, finance, and leadership. And depending on what your concentration that you're focused on, you'll have specific professors that you'll work with. You know, everybody takes the base courses, but at the end of the program, you have a chance to pick all these electives in, in the, in the um, discipline that you really like. Um, the other thing that we do, which Jim's going to talk more about on the next slide, is we have something called a GBI, which is a global um, business intensive, where we go out of the country or stay within the country. Sometimes we do it within the United States, um, but most of the time the students get an option of either or. And we go visit, visit businesses in, in real world. How are they learning directly from, uh, how are we learning directly from business um, people and learning what they do, how they work globally, how they work with some of the challenges that we have in the economy. And they'll share with you those real world examples. You get to see their businesses when you do that. And, and they, uh, they cross all different types of industries. Like next week, I'm taking uh, a, a lot, majority of our students, 33 students, to Chicago, and we're visiting a metal scrap recycling center, um, which is going to be amazing because they're one of the largest scrap metal recycling centers. So that's just one of the visits, and some of the other visits are, you know, fintech and things like that. So the other thing is, in, in this program, you have an opportunity to do a full-time internship, which is really exp experiential learning. Um, that's something you can either work in the U.S. or go back to another country or your home country and do a full-time internship and take what you've applied here at Pepperdine and do real world examples. Um, and the students just love that. They A lot of them love to stay here in the US if they're international students, but you have that time to really learn, to, to apply what you're learning. And that's towards the end of the program. And then some of the students will go um, study abroad. And this is you know something that is really a unique thing in the program. And you can learn from other countries. You go actually there and do your study in your concentration. If you don't study in your concentration, you stay in Malibu, which is an incredible place to stay. We don't want to discredit Malibu. Um, 
and then um, focus on your electives and your concentration. So you either do them in Malibu or you do them studying abroad. Um, and then there's tons of events like our career clubs, our student clubs, social and personal events to get involved in. And this, this program is something, the more you get involved, the more you'll get back from it. So we encourage you to get involved, um, get involved with your fellow students and cohorts and really become active and even, even you know, work on some special different programs that we can work with. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Jim, hang on, to talk about the Global Business Intensive. Thank you, Kimber. So what's a global uh, business um, master's program without doing global business, right? So Kimber did a nice job talking about how one of the unique things of our program is this emphasis on developing your global mindset. It consists of these three different areas. It's your social capital, intellectual capital, and your cultural capital. And you'll have an opportunity through these global business intensives to really elaborate and talk about how you're developing these three facets of your management skill set. So what we'll do is we'll actually take you abroad into a variety of different countries around the world. We've gone to Eastern Europe, places like Estonia. We've gone to Finland. We've taken students to Argentina, Brazil, um, Costa Rica last year, and even uh, Spain, just to name a few. And every course is centered around some kind of theme. So for example, we might focusing on experiential marketing, entrepreneurship, innovation, sustainability. And you'll have a combination of some in-class academic work that we'll do before we go to these countries. And more importantly, you're gonna have an opportunity to network and meet companies that are specialists or doing something very specific in these different areas of our themes that, that, that I talked about a moment ago. So you're actually gonna walk these companies Companies, meet with the professionals, some of those managers, sometimes even some of their customers to really understand what it's like to do business in that global context. And the idea is that you're developing your cultural capital throughout this experience. And it isn't just all work. We certainly do develop our cultural capital by partaking in local customs, uh, local refreshments, local food. Um, I can tell you that in Spain last year, we had some wonderful tapas and churros with chocolate that we enjoyed late in the evening, took in the flamenco show. So it's really about getting to know some of the cultural attributes of these countries and businesses that we're studying. In addition to this, we also offer some experiential learning throughout our entire program. A lot of our courses are built around practice. This idea of partnering with either local businesses or international businesses on a project basis. Um, as Kimber mentioned, a lot of our faculty are practitioners. So they'll bring in some of their own work into classrooms. And I can't emphasize what Kimber mentioned a moment ago develop close relationships with your faculty. These folks have great networks. They can help you with internships and help you with just a whole host of things once you even leave our program. Kimber and I are very proud of our extensive networks of former students that still contact us, still wanna hear from us, and we certainly would welcome you into that club as well. Great, great. And we are going next week. So I'm going to Chicago with the group. And then our other group is going to Madrid um, in Spain. So exciting, exciting things. And, and we've had some amazing destinations, really amazing. And more to come, right? Okay, so one of the things we talked about was the trimester exchange program, which is, you know, looking at a partner university where we have 30 partners that you have these learning opportunities. Um, it's required for our U.S. citizens um, who are here and, op and optional for international students because internationals are studying abroad already, but we really want our domestic students, if any of you are domestic students, we really want them to have that experience and that international experience. So the applications are open to something you'll apply for. You get to pick from these 30 high caliber partners. Um, we've had students go to Japan, France, um, everywhere like it's it's unbelievable the choice germany oh yeah germany yeah some like and it's life-changing those that go to countries that they generally wouldn't go to it is optional for our international students but in some cases some of our international students can't study in those countries and that's why it's such a great opportunity because you can go there on um, pepperdine's um, exchange program so one of the things that's key is your attitude when you come into msgb is one of the things we wanna do is get out of your comfort zone, enjoy it, take those risks, 
you, because there are things that you'll do that, you know, it's a new environment. Anybody going to a new school, it's not easy, right? That first day is tough, but our, our environment is so welcoming and so um, hand-holding that um, Pepperdine is a great place to be. The other thing is be prepared for challenges. Um, a lot of students we hear, they come in and say, I want to do finance. And then they love the marketing classes from Jim and I, right? <laughs> they love the marketing classes. And then they say, wow, I came here for finance, but now I think I want to move to marketing con um, concentration. So that's okay. And one of the things that you can do here is have that flexibility and really figure out which concentration works best for you. And, and that's where you get those examples that you really find out what you're good at and what you like and what you love. Um, and then the other thing is it goes by really, really fast. It sounds like a long program, but it goes by really, really fast. So we ask that you take each day to reflect on what you've learned and done. I am a Pepperdine grad and I got my MBA here and I said it went by by like a flash. And if there's anything I would have done, I would like to have gone slower. Well, when I say that people go, oh my gosh, slower. I said, no, I don't mean the time. I just with I, I wish I had cherished the time when I was there and, and reflected more. So keep a log and really keep that reflection. We talk a lot about reflection here. And actively engage in your classes and your program activities. Like I said before, get involved. The more you get involved, the more it gives you back. And then focus on building your strengths. And you're going to find your strengths here at Pepperdine and especially in this program. Some classes will be super hard and some classes will be really easy. And you'll think, wow, I didn't know I was capable of that. I have one student that came and got a finance major and ended up doing an internship in marketing because that's what he could find. And now he's become an incredible marketer. He goes, I never thought I was going to be in marketing, but I love it. It's like a gift I never knew I had. And then balance your work time and personal time. And uh, personal time. We want you to have fun here. You need both. This is a place where you're gonna remember your time here at Pepperdine. We don't want it all to be academic. We want you to have lots of fun. Okay, so now we're gonna open it up to question Q and A. Don't be shy. We promise we won't bite. I know some of the students that couldn't attend sent in some questions, right, Samantha yeah. and Linda? Yes, actually, I do have a question that is coming from one of the attendees today. So the question is, could you give me an example of the GBI program or the GBI workshop opportunities, like what kind of projects we are working on and how we're engaging with the local companies? Sure. I can tell you when we did a couple of years ago before COVID, we went to Helsinki and um, Tallinn, Estonia. So we visited actually two countries on this particular trip. So one of the things we did in Estonia, we were looking at innovation within a government context. So we heard from the local consulate and they were talking to us about how Estonia's government has completely e-enabled their government services. Would you have any guess how long it would take to file corporate taxes in Estonia? It's about three minutes. Personal taxes, 60 <laughs> seconds. Everything has been digitized. So they're literally offering a level of service that hasn't been found anywhere else in the world. And in Helsinki, Finland, we visited the local Aalto University where they were actually doing some experiments using uh, visual reality. So the students got a chance to put on a VR headset and the application was to try to let apartments. So you would basically put on this headset and walk and do a virtual tour of an apartment. And I will admit, after about 20 minutes, some of the students got dizzy. <laughs> that was some of the feedback we gave to some of the university researchers. But it was amazing to see, um, you know, AI technology applied in a really novel way. And the students had, like, had an opportunity to give direct feedback to some of the researchers about what they liked about the application, the experience, how to make it better. And the last uh, place we visited there was a, uh, excuse me, video game company that was making mobile device video games and they were really interested in our students perspective about why they play what games they play how to monetize different types of gaming features and functions and the conversations were just very applied again not just academic theoretical but it's like how do you improve this particular game and i was pleasantly surprised some of our students already knew some of these games are actually working on so that's kind of a small taste of the type of things we'll do on one of these upcoming gbi I know that um, we've been asked if, yes, you can unmute your mic and ask your question directly. 
Oh, hello, hello. Hello. We can hello. Hear. Yes, um, this is Simon um, from China. So I have two questions, actually. So the first one is I saw it in the material earlier just now that um, the application for the trimester abroad was due in February 2023, I think. But was it like a mistake of like uh, uh, outdated material thing or, or can we still apply for uh, trimesters abroad now? Or so first of all, you're very, very astute, right? You're picking up things. So yes, that was a an older slide that we had. Okay. So what happens is when you start Pepperdine, you don't do your global um, uh, intensive until towards the end of the program. Right. So you'll have a chance, like in your second or third trimester, to submit. So you haven't oh. made any dates yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so my second question would be: so, for example, I heard about the scrap metal recycling thing um, in Chicago, right? So, yes. if I, um, if if somehow I'm interested in this kind of specific business. Um, and about bringing it to other uh, to elsewhere. So can I still visit that place or or is it that we have different places to visit for every program every year? It's, it's all going to be different and random? Well, sometimes we go back to this because every cohort, we have different opportunities. So um, sometimes we do go back. Like I've been um, twice to Costa Rica okay. with our students, um, two different cohorts. And we did see the same businesses. Um, so it is something that could be possible. Right now, this is our first time to visit Chicago with the students into the scrap metal factory. Uh -huh. So it happens to be something unique. Um, they're all very unique. Like even Costa Rica, you know, we took two cohorts, to, you know, two different times a year, one in April and one in December, um, to even a banana plantation. We went to a banana plantation in Costa Rica and learned the business of making, you know, growing and planting and, and making a business out of bananas and plantains. So um, sometimes there are repeats, but I will tell you, every program we had, every business is amazing and learning about those businesses. Okay. So it's not just one business that you you have in that week. It's a, it's a seven day week intensive. You might see, you know, 10 different businesses and learn about 10 different industries. So we try to make sure that in every concentration, you're learning something from each one of them. That same trip that we're going to in Chicago, we're also visiting a um, cosmetic company. So mm -hmm. like see the contrast from a metal scrap metal company to a cosmetic company. So very, very different. Okay. Um, so the GMI program and the trimester abroad are to totally different, right? Like um, the trimester abroad is like studying abroad for like a, for like a trimester, for like a couple months, whereas the GMI is like for a week or like a short exactly, month. Correct, correct, exactly. It's a one week of of, of intensive oh. uh, kind of course. Where I think of it that way. The other nice thing I will say that separates, I think, particularly our program, is that oftentimes these country visits that we do. Many times, Kimber and I are leveraging our personal networks, our personal relationships. So for example, when I visited Alto University, it was a personal connection that got us an opportunity to go into the VR lab. And that's something you might not find at other schools and other programs. So not just us, but even our whole faculty like to leverage our resources where we can for your betterment. Okay, thank you. Um, so also, can I, can I pick like a lot of G, uh, the GMI programs? Like, can I go like for a, a, a lot of times, like a couple of times? <laughs> <laughs> you know i love the energy that's great you want to go on more than one like, no i awesome. want to see more things it's just yeah you know so one question i i believe you can so the gm it's called a gbi for oh, gbi yes. and then we have other gbis that i believe msgb students can submit for linda do you happen to know on the other programs that are available to like the mba actually students? gbi is applicable for uh for every single program students Right. Yeah. So every single program student can go join the GBI. And every single year we have two GBIs, one in April, one in December. So you can apply. Okay. Right. Which is great. So, you know, if you, if you want to do that, that's great. And there's some amazing places like, um, just so you know, as professors, we're applying too. We want to go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all for those sure. GBIs. So yeah. because of all the things and experiences that the students get involved in. Okay, thank you, thank you.
Yeah, Simon and I, we had a long conversation before he submitted this application. And until now, last week, last Friday, he was admitted into this program. So I know Simon is very excited. He is very entrepreneurial. His family just migrated to the United States and want him to be to start some his own business. That's why he's exploring the opportunities in Chicago, like a script metal, manufacturing, those kind of business. So we, we like students like you, the energy, Simon. Thank you for the great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then I also have another question. That is, um, today I had a co consultation with a prospe prospective applicant. Unfortunately, she is not here, but she is an athlete from Seaver undergrad from Pepperdine University Seaver. She's a basketball player, and she's very interested to start a career in uh, marketing. So her question for the GB committee, uh, Kimber and Jim, is like, how as a student who doesn't come with any like a business background, like a build up her resume within the fifteen month when she's been with us and eventually that's going to help her to start a career in marketing like she's very interested in companies like the honest company that's has a, has a very strong tie with us so how she can make her career start over there start from there i'm going to just mention one thing camera i'm going to hand it over to you okay. but one of the things that we do in our courses as i mentioned is we do have many consulting projects where we actually work with an actual company. The Honest Company is actually one of the companies we do many, many projects with. So there you have an opportunity to interact directly with these organizations, with management, and build your own relationship. In previous um, classes like this, I've had the owners of these companies hire my former students. That happens a lot. In addition to that, Kimber is going to tell you about some amazing opportunities she's had through insurance at some of her network of how she's helped students do exactly what you're talking about. Kimber? So a couple of things. One is exactly like Jim is saying, the projects along the way is particularly in marketing, the projects along the way, you're doing full marketing plans. So, and I always say to my students, these are real marketing plans. Like you can take this plan and give it to a company. You know, companies are very interested in this. Um, so those are things you can put on your resume to build your resume. So even if you pick Starbucks, you can say, look, I did a whole marketing plan for Starbucks and put this on your resume. But then that's why we include the internship into our program, because that is that real world learning. It's a full um, trimester. You know, it's usually in the summertime that you do your internship. And so you're, while you're in the program, you're getting that real world example. You're getting that it's you know, daily activities, you're getting exposure to what's going on in a business. So that goes on your resume too. So you can build your resume as you go along. And again, we're talking about marketing, other courses, you know, in finance, you'll be doing certain analysis. You put that on your resume. In leadership, you're doing leadership um, behavioral courses that you're, you're doing simulations and things like that. You add that to your resume. So easy to build it because you are, you are working, you know, these are real world um, issues that companies um, are actively seeking. And don't forget, Kimber mentioned earlier the variety of clubs that we have and organizations you can belong to. That is a great opportunity for you to network, get to know different students, different leaders out there. So you're literally going to have a whole list of options. Your challenge is to get involved, make phone calls, go to the meetings. But I think you will not want for opportunity. We're going to have many, many opportunities available to you. Those are great suggestions. Right, and I see that Patricia has a message, a, a note in here that says, will we be paired with a faculty member? You will have all your faculty members that will help support you, which is great in all disciplines. The other thing is we have a career center. So you'll work with the career center on how to apply for insure, internships, how to do your resume for an internship. So all of that is extremely helpful and we give you the support that you need to do that. And Patricia, again, this is why we say you got to go out there and form relationships with it with your faculty, because remember, the more we get to know you and understand your strengths, the better we're in a position to match you to different opportunities that we might see. So again, get involved, ask questions. Okay, um, can I ask another question? Okay, yeah. so um, right now I do kind of operate in a startup. So I do have my own startup here in Manila. So I've been in the industry or working in business for quite some time. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, how often are the networking sessions within Pepperdine or outside of Pepperdine? Um, I'm used to a lot of networking sessions here in the Philippines. Like for this week, I have two. So I also wanted to ask that. 
So when we say how often, so you'll have a cohort that you'll pretty much stay in the program with. And there you develop, you know, you develop, you create teams within those cohorts and work directly with them. So you develop relationships with them. And I always say that's the best kind of networking because they're going to go back to their countries. They're going to go um, and be successful. You know, a lot of my students say, like I have one student, one MSGB student who started a company in um, Indonesia. And he said, you know what? The relationships that I built at Pepperdine are the best. If I want to take my brand to the Middle East, I, I met someone in, in school who in this program who helped me take it to the Middle East, someone who's going to help me take it to China. So those kinds of networking just within the cohort are key. But we do have other programs in the um, on campus that you're meeting students from other programs, not just MSGB. So you'll meet MBAs, you'll meet ones from our other business programs, from um, all, you know, we have five different master's programs, I believe it's about five or six that you can meet other cohorts and, and belong in those clubs. And again, it just extends you to know more people. So I don't know how often the networking events are, but I know they, they're pretty active in things that they're doing, a lot of social clubs and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, again, I'd be surprised if there isn't something going on at least every week, if not even more uh, times a week. Because remember, it's not just the school sanction events. We have networking events the school puts on, but these are student run organizations and you guys do your own your own networking. You'll, I, I've seen you guys organize trips to the beach, trips to Top Golf, to local you know, restaurants, celebrating different types of cultural events. So really a lot of it is student driven. Um, and because I'm not a student, I, I don't always know what those meetings are like. But I, again, I think you'll you'll not want for lack of opportunity. It's just a matter of which ones are of interest to you and which work with your schedule. Yeah, I'm gonna, okay, Kimba, go ahead. I was just gonna answer her other question. You're not required to study abroad. So if you wanna stay on the Malibu campus when when others are studying abroad, you can stay on the Malibu campus and take marketing leadership or finance concentrations. And I, um, I have another question. How many units um, is it required to take per semester, per trimester? When is this, this when would this group start? Fall 23? 23, yes. August. Yeah, so in August, fall 23, it's 41 units total. It's about 15, um, 14 to 15 per trimester. Okay, thank you. And the last trimester is 12 units. 12 units? So it's, oh. it's anywhere between 12 and 14 each trimester. Okay, great. Thank you. Those are some great questions. Yeah. I'm really impressed with this group. I can't wait to see you all in, um, in fall. Yeah, I love uh, Simon's enthusiasm wanting to do all the study abroad. <laughs> I would say that's a... You guys, that's definitely an app, what you're looking for in applicants though, right? So maybe we can close out with kind of, you're both on the committee, you look at the applications, kind of talk about what, what would make an applicant stand out in their application for this program. Uh, I'll take a shot at that, Kimber. Um, you know, it's a variety of things. I don't think there's one thing we look at. Um, obviously we do the academic stuff, right? Your GPA, where you went to school, that sort of things. I like looking at your statements, your personal letters that you write us about why you want to join our program. How does it fit with your overall career and your life objectives? Um, and I'm also trying to look at the type of courses that you took, um, which ones you're gravitating toward. Was there any that I see kind of an evolution? Maybe you started as an art artist and now you're going into the world of business or, or vice versa. I find that very interesting. And I think the last thing I'm looking for in some of the applicants is your letters of recommendation. What do uh, your past faculty say about you? What are some of your strengths? And I also like looking at your CVs, your resumes, about some of the internships that you've done. Maybe you had some work experience. And I look at every cohort that we admit independently. So if we have a lot of folks that maybe have a lot of work experience, it's nice to kind of bring in folks who maybe don't have a lot of work experience. So I think for me, I'm always looking for balance and the, the cohort. 
and for something special about a student that kind of comes in through the documentation, is the student hungry? Are they excited? Can they can they create a positive learning experience for the other students? So those are kind of some of the intangibles that we're looking for. And we really make sure that we know that the cohorts are going to fit and have the same type of um, mindset and focus. So those those things are really important. You know, it, it, there are specific, you know, you belong to this cohort, you'll be with them the entire program. So we want to make sure that they're all a good fit together. So we kind of, it's, it's that's why that essay is so important and that statement, because it kind of gives us some insight on how you're going to fit with the, the others in the group. The one thing I will add too is that if you are chosen chosen by us to be part of this program, you were chosen intentionally. Like we don't accept everyone and we're very purposeful in who we let in. And the reason we do that is because the uh, the other part of this is that everybody on our committee, every faculty member you're going to work with is 110% committed to your success. So this is why we take so much time in letting in the folks that we think will thrive in our program. So consider yourself to be lucky of a very exclusive and special group. All right, uh, Linda, I wanted to check in. Did you, any more private questions come through? So far, so good. And then I definitely want to add to a little bit more uh, to the networking things that Patricia just uh, mentioned, actually. We do have a lot of like alumni mixer. Like last year, we just had uh, two major ones. One is in the summer uh, at EPLP. If you search for the Time Out in Los Angeles, that's a magazine talking about the best place to go to in LA. You're going to find out EPLP is the place that you can see the beautiful view, the skyline view of Los Angeles. That's where we had our alumni mixture last year. And then also, we also had recently just held one in Top Golf. It's a very popular spot for uh, people who have big part a party and the gatherings. So we had alumni mixture this year, early this year in Top Golf. And I do believe our marketing, they're working hard on pulling up more events together for all the students. And today, lunchtime, we also had another webinar. Our, our recent, gra um, recent graduate, full-time MBA student, Katie Iwashida. I'm going to quote what she said. She said, Pe Pepperdine has the largest population of, of alumni in the Los Angeles area, which is so true, so true. So once you're here, you're going to see the power of networking and the power of alumni. Well said, Linda, thank you. Exactly, yes. We had one more question sneak in, because uh, that always happens. And how many students are in a class? Because I know we have the small class sizes, but what does we that do. look like? Usually about 20 students. Max, we do have a max that can't go more than 25 or 26. So yeah. about 20 is the number. So it's a great class size, um, not too big and not too small. I agree. You can't hide in the back in these classes, but no, not at all. <laughs> you can try, but we'll find you. <laughs> yes, your professor will know who you are. This is not, you know, class of 300. So, uh, you know, one of the things I'll mention too, Linda mentioned about some of these great networking events. Um, students also organize their own events and, and by class. I know one of my previous classes, they rented a car and went to camping for the first time in Yosemite. What's funny about that is not one of them had a clue what to do for camping. Um, so I had to help them out with some, with some decisions, but they had a blast. They came back, they said it took them, the first night they couldn't put their tent up, but it was okay, they slept in the car, but they figured it out the next day. And they had so much fun not knowing what to do that, that by the time they left, they were like world champion campers, they said. Oh, they can go camp anywhere now. But the whole point with that is that there's a lot of things that you may be curious about, you wanna try while you're here. We encourage you to do that. There's nothing like going out there with some friends and trying something new and exciting. And again, as faculty, we're all here to help you guys thrive. So I think, again, you'll, you'll have plenty of opportunity to kind of to have a whole host of professional and personal activities. All right. Well, with that, we're coming up on our time here, the almost six o'clock. So thank you guys for joining us this evening. It uh, looks like everybody in this would be working with Linda. <laughs> so I'm sure lots of you have already been talking to Linda. I'm sure she's already emailed you. So if you have questions, Linda is definitely a great resource as she's displayed here. And then big special thank you to Kimber and Jim for joining us. Um, you always 
you definitely know what you're doing in the realm of marketing because I would like to apply now and get it. <laughs> so. <Taking> applications. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I think I'd like to learn more about global business <laughs> or sit in one of your classes. Um, but I know you guys are very busy, especially with, like, with this time of year with the final. So I always appreciate that you uh, are willing to take some time out of your day to talk to our prospective students. And it looks like you'll have some new faces in your cohort come August. Um, and so with that, um, you have other questions that pop up, Linda's a great resource, reach out to her, reach out to our office, there's no such thing as a stupid question, uh, we're happy to guide you uh, on your journey here at Pepperdine, and have a wonderful rest of your evening or morning, wherever you happen to be. So, All right, and we look thank forward you, everyone. to you on campus, thank you, bye-bye. Take care.